We've already been introduced to forwards in terms of forward interest rates. We went through a detailed example in terms of the bond markets on constructing a forward transaction. Now we want to concentrate on more detail, a more general set of commodities beside bonds and talk about what forward markets actually are. Now in another video clip, I found it easiest to pitch this idea of forwards and futures in terms of agricultural commodities. And I want to return to that example and reiterate the example that I actually went through in terms of the farmer who is growing corn and the cereal producer who consumes the corn. So let's establish the risk of the farmer and the risk of the cereal maker. And this will help us understand why they would be interested in participating in the forward market. First, the farmer. The farmer has a lot of fixed costs and usually is levered. And if the price of the corn goes below a certain threshold, then the farmer is at risk for going bankrupt. The farmer has the incentive to hedge, and this hedging takes the form of selling the crop before the crop is actually um, harvested. So you sow and then you sell immediately for a fixed price. The forward market will allow us to actually do this. So um, in the example that I detailed uh, in an earlier clip, the price of a bushel of corn was four dollars and perhaps the the farmer expects to harvest a million bushels of corn so the farmer would sell forward the corn at a price which we go into great detail as to how to determine in the lecture note but let's say it's four dollars so this guarantees that the farmer will be able to sell the one million bushels for four dollars. Now the cereal producer on the other side um, wants to participate in the forward market because they are at risk if the price of corn goes up. If the price of corn goes to six dollars then they might be hurt in terms of their competitive position in the market by having to pay more for the input. So they have an incentive also to hedge their form of hedging would be to lock in a purchase price today. So they go long in the forward market by agreeing to buy at $4. Okay. And that's basically it for a forward contract. A forward contract um, you initiate at uh, time zero. It has a specification for the final price that the commodity is purchased and sold for and there's a specification as to how much of the commodity will be purchased and sold. When that time comes along the farmer delivers the corn and the cereal producer um, takes delivery of the corn. If uh, the price of the corn in the so-called spot market, and that's just the market that exists at any time, uh, where the physical commodity is traded, if it drops to three dollars or two dollars, it doesn't matter because the farmer is locked in to sell at four dollars. And uh, if the price is two or three dollars, it might be the case that Kellogg's regrets uh, entering into this particular trade because if they had speculated, they might have got the price for two or three dollars for a bushel of corn. But you can always say that, um, well, this time they, they were unlucky, but the next time they could be lucky. That is, the next time it might be a price of uh, $6, and they've locked in 4 So it's rather interesting that uh, forward markets and futures markets are, are derivative markets. And some people think that if you participate in these markets, then you're doing something risky. And it turns out that that is exactly incorrect. For the farmer, the farmer is minimizing the risk by locking in the price of $4. The farmer could speculate 
And how do you speculate? You don't enter into a position in the forward market. You let it ride. Maybe the price of corn will be $8 and it'll pay off. Maybe the price of corn is going to be $2 and you're going to have to declare bankruptcy. So by not hedging in the forward market, you're speculating. By participating in this derivative market, this forward market, you're minimizing your risk. So it turns out that uh, this participation is actually risk reducing rather than risk enhancing. Now the lecture note, as I said, goes into great details about how to determine what the price of the forward should be. For example, the spot price of corn might be four dollars at trading today, but the contract for delivery at harvest time, let's say the end of September, it's not necessarily going to have a price of four dollars. There are certain things that go into the price of the forward contract. Certain things like um, the, depending upon the commodity, there's the so-called cost of carry. So if you actually purchase the commodity today, so if Kellogg's went out and purchased the corn today that it needed for September, then it would have to, to pay for all of the storage costs over that period. Now, if they just buy the forward contract, they don't have to bear the storage cost. So this somehow has to come into play in the actual pricing of the forward contract. Now there's other costs. Um, for example, if we're talking about um, cattle, um, it's uh, in addition to providing an area for the cattle uh, to live, you have to pay for feed. So there's feed and storage cost. If it's something like uh, a bond, um, then, it's the, then it's different. You don't have the same storage costs that are involved. But with a bond, you get something. You get a coupon. If it's a stock, you also get something. It's called a dividend. So often these are referred to as having a negative cost of carry. Gold, um, you don't get a coupon or a, a dividend from gold, but there is a cost of carry. And the cost of carry is that you have to provide housing for the gold and you have to provide security for carrying the gold. So each commodity has a different cost of carry. And this cost of carry goes into the actual price, the forward price. So forward markets are, are quite important. The most important forward markets are for interest rates and for foreign currency. And we're going to return to both of these later on in the course.